Father and Sons is a new film by director Carl Basai. Basai has directed such films as Normal, Repeaters, and most notably A Meal with Sir Ian McKellen. His latest ensemble feature, Fathers and Sons, is a follow-up to his film Mothers and Daughters. It has an ensemble cast, and we're going to be sitting down for a feature chat with two of the stars of the film, Manoush Sud and Stephen Lobo. Well, the film is a follow-up to Carl's uh, film before this, which was Mothers and Daughters which um, followed um, a number of storylines between various mothers and their daughters. So fathers and sons is the exact same thing, only fathers and sons, obviously. And uh, our storyline is um, Carl wanted to reverse the stereotype. Most Indo-Canadian themes these days, you have a traditional father, you know, very orthodox Hindu, Sikh or Muslim, and the kid revolts in some way. He wants to become an actor instead of a, an accountant or um, a dancer instead of an engineer type of thing. Um, but Carl wanted to reverse that. So in this show, in this movie, I'm a very flamboyant, my character is gay actually, very flamboyant, um, very non-typical Indo-Canadian type of individual. While yeah, Steve's yeah. character um, is a very conservative and accountant actually. And he finds me to be very embarrassing and such, and so the storyline sort of bounces off around that conflict. That's the next thing I was going to touch on, is Stephen, your character in this film has a lot on his plate. He's dealing with the stresses and the pressures of planning a wedding, but he also is trying to handle the situation between him and his father, and it's, he doesn't have the closest relationship with his father. Um, he describes him as... Like, gay doesn't even describe, it's more than gay. It's like he's a flaming Bollywood Indian homosexual. And he, his, the way he dresses embarrasses you, what, how he... Yeah. What he says embarrasses you, what he wears embarrasses you. And there's a lot of unresolved issues that are bubbling beneath the surface. So, how did you go about building this relationship? The two of you, this vast history and this vast story, what was that process like? Um, well, you know, the luxury of working the way we did with Carl, you know, we kind of, you know, the, we had the opportunity at the time to get together. We got together a few times before we started shooting. And, um, we sort of would all suggest tweaks to our character to play to our to play to our strengths or to play to our our hit on how you know on our take. Originally, um, it was supposed our launching point, like our point of departure, was more of um, a Kaja Fall, the Birdcage kind of a story, where mm -hmm. I was more I was actually kind of cool with the way my father, um, you know was and then I suggested you know well what if he's totally and utterly ashamed of, of it and originally I was getting married to a, uh, like a, another Indian girl too so I was like well what if I'm you know I'm totally separating myself from mm -hmm. from being brown there's like you know shame involved with that you know I thought it would be funny I thought it'd be interesting to to, to play up on that you know the, the you know that embarrassment that you know, for some reason, a lot of people I know I do. You still feel I'm I'm, in, I'm 37 years old now, but there's still a part. You know, I have a great relationship with both my parents, but every now and then there's that little part that's like you know that teenage part, adolescent part that's just totally and utterly embarrassed from you know by what your parents could say or do. So I thought it'd be fun to, to you know to play up on that. And that's that's how I sort of approached it. And it was um, a lot of love and. and what I was getting, you know, it was, it was so pure what you were doing. Yeah, I, I wanted to play out the idea that my character, uh, whose name was Sutish, my character was very, very totally comfortable um, in who he was, mm -hmm. however flamboyant he was. And while Steve was still not someone who had found his place in life yet, and so we played a lot off of that as well. Yeah, you are very comfortable with yeah. who you are. You're very, sh you're very in touch with your feminine side, and you're very, touch with your sexuality in this yeah. film. Um, there are two scenes in particular that I'm thinking of. One is the scene in the restaurant with Amber where you're giving her some very intimate marital advice. Right. Another contributing negative factor to a young couple can be problems of a sexual nature. Oh no. No. If no, there's no. a problem, mm -hmm. you know, in the in the you know no. just let him talk. Please let him talk. Rather than analyze it. Yes then there's always, what works almost every single time, is to simply try different positions. And then there's another scene at the club where you're dressed as a woman. Oh boy, my only pride and joy, I raise you since a child. 
Yeah. So, how was this character for you to play? Oh, he was he fun. Was relishing in it the whole time. Yeah, because Carl, um, from the very beginning, he said that if anybody in this film can totally go for it and not be held back, it's your character. So, um, what I did was to answer your question. I just really went for it, and I knew that if I went too far somewhere, that uh, the editor would take care of it. So. You guys had a, a lot of input into the storyline as far as how your, your character storyline was going to mm -hmm. unfold. And how did you how did you prepare for the scenes before you went to shoot them? Did you just go go through some rehearsals to the point where they became almost scripted, or how did that work? Not really, not even that. I mean, we had um, it was really about arcing out the plot, you know. So we we know this scene is going to accomplish this. We knew, you know, we knew the story. You know, we, we so when we say it's improvised, we're we, we're saying we improvised the dialogue. Yeah, but the storyline was mapped out. For yeah. example, like like the restaurant scene we were talking about, we knew that that scene had to start with um, me already agreeing there would not be an engagement party. But we also knew and agreed collectively that that scene had to end with me convincing them to have the engagement party. But how we got there. Yeah, Absolutely. but how we got there, you know, what the conversation was, was completely made up. I mean, we all, we both promised to Carl that we would not privately try to create dialogue before the shoot. But you broke that promise. To help Steve out, yeah. Thank, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did I really break that promise? Yeah, you did. I remember you were like, you call, you, you would, that's, the, those were your, I was obsessing about my name, and you would call me before, or you would pull me off to the side before, and you were like, this is what you could, you're like, I'm gonna say this. Oh, I gotta say this. I don't recall that, but I'm sure Steve's telling the truth, so. <laughs> Fire! Can you describe your father for me? Um, I need you to stay just, I, I need so, you to I'm stay, oh, yeah. I need you to relax. Mm -hmm. getting married! The role of a father for most Jews would be to uh, instill a sense of um, fear. It is four o'clock. We must drink to your mother. She has such beautiful breasts like rubies. Such beautiful vagina. None of us asked to be born. I mean, they're the ones who dragged us into this mess. It's what Dad wanted. It's I'm what sorry. Dad wanted. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Here comes the ceremony. Whoa! We have to accept the people we love. Regardless. Come on, we're just having fun. Would you grow up for once? Come on, stop it! My father and son, we will fight and we will pay pain together. There are many people with those sons and daughters. Maybe I should have had it like a dog. Father and Sons is now playing. Check your local listings for showtimes. Get out there and support Canadian film.